first of all, thanks very much for 52 North and the conference organizers and sponsors for allowing me to come through and present on this work that we're doing. This is down here in South Africa. Uh, we're working on a large oceans project and I'm gonna talk briefly, very briefly about that. So we're working on a project called um, OSIMS. You'll see the hyperlink down there at the bottom of the, of the current image, um, Oceans and Coastal Information Management System. It's been a multi-year project primarily sponsored by the South African government. Uh, and our client or, or collaborators, Department of Environment, F Fisheries and Forestry, and the Coastal Management Unit. Now, there's many elements to this project, which you'll see if you browse that project, but my particular subsection I'm talking about here is looking at water quality monitoring um, around the, um, the, the edge of the coast. Uh, the, so the, the current tool that we, we're, calling, we're calling these decision support tools, um, this has two elements to it. It has a remote sensing aspect, which you'll see on the menu on the left-hand side there. And there's also an in-situ. Now, while the remotely sensed product is obviously very interesting, uh, that's not my focus. I'm just talking about the in-situ data and how that's been gathered and stored. So the interface, this is what, what the users would see. Uh, obviously, a, a spatial layout showing where the monitoring data is collected. And then below and to the right, more information about the points once you select them. So we have the case that there's multiple um, different sampling or survey uh, programs running in South Africa, and we need a way to integrate them, um, to present them in a way that's easy for users to understand so that, they, that the data can be graphed. You can download the data, um, or you can look at, you know, look at the numbers from different sampling programs, all in the same kind of context. Um, so the, fr the front end is, I think, MapStore and, and React, and the graphing itself has been done, uh, I think, a number of versions, depending on which web designer is working on this. But I'm going to talk more about the back end process. So this is conceptually what we're doing. On the right hand side, you'll see, uh, obviously, that's where the central image is downloaded and processed. But I'm not talking about that. I'm focusing on the aspects on the left, the top left there, you'll see. So different samplers will collect the data either through in-situ sensors or by manual data collection. Uh, the data is typically stored, unfortunately, in, in like loose collections of spreadsheets um, by, diff by all these different organizations. Then there's usually some kind of associated metadata, which may or may not be in any kind of usable form. So our challenge is to integrate this data, and we chose to use the OGC sensor thing service for that, because it's fairly, fairly flexible and, and lightweight. I have used the SOS before, but that didn't seem appropriate for, for this particular context. Okay. Um, so I'll then talk briefly uh, about the back end, um, how, the, how all this data comes together. So there's really two key aspects here. There's the data elements themselves, um, and then there's the data flow. So the data elements obviously reflect the various aspects of the OGC um, sensor thing service. Uh, data streams, properties, sensors, units, and things. I think people have talked a, a number of times in this conference already about um, the sensor thing service. I, I feel that the people understand that. Um, so the way, we, the way it's been handled in our system is there's JSON configuration files, which exist for each of those, because typically those things don't change or, or they change very gradually. You know, new, one or two new sensors might come on, or maybe they, start, maybe they might start monitoring a new property, but by and large, um, this kind of data remains fairly static. So on the left, um, there's an example of a data stream element. Um, and I always see the data stream as, as a kind of integrative point. It brings together units of measurement, the types of observation, specifically what you're observing, what kind of tool you're using to observe it, uh, and then the thing. And in this case, the thing uh, we've chosen to define as being the surveys or monitoring program. So for example, in this one, it's a, it's a blue flag beach program, which is then described. And then we've made use of the metadata um, aspect, which you can store in properties. So those are key pair values, uh, talking about such things as what kind of category of thing is it? Uh, what's the status? Is it active or inactive? Which organization is running it? And so that allows the, the downstream users or the front end to start customizing how the information is displayed or filtered. Uh, the data flow, we're effectively running a pipeline, kind of typical pipeline process that then calls multiple loaders. So you typically have one loader per monitoring program and they inherit from a common class to, sh to share methods and tools. Each loader then gets configured. So we describe what kind of Excel file it is, where the data is stored in that Excel file. And then that together with the JSON metadata, which is described above, uh, can be parsed and ingested. In terms of the ingestion process, we're obviously using the API sensor things, and there we have a, a kind of generic client class that handles all the requests to and from um, the API. Um, there's no time to talk about the future, but that's what we, the work we've done so far. Thanks very much.